This is part three of research methods. This is page 29 through 36 of the Myers text. I tried recording this earlier and I couldn't get it, so here we go. Here's try number two. Um, first off is correlation. A correlation is the relationship between two variables. It's a relationship is not cause and effect, not cause and effect. So for instance, there is a correlation between smoking and can you guess? Yes, lung cancer. There are no experiments or no cause and effects that say 100% smoking causes lung cancer. There's plenty of things that have studies that show that people who smoke tend to have higher incidence of lung cancer, which draws a direct link to smoking, which shows you that you have a correlation. So a correlation is a relationship. That relationship can be strong or it can be weak, but it's just a relationship between two variables, between two things. It doesn't show cause and effect. It does not show cause and effect. That's one thing you have to remember. No cause and effect, okay? So correlation, no cause and effect, simply a relationship between two variables can either be strong or weak, which leads us to this point right here, correlation coefficient. A correlation coefficient is a number that shows how strong or weak that correlation is. It can be between 0.99 and 0.99. One's gonna be positive and one's gonna be negative. Two things to remember with correlation coefficients. Number one, the number the number determines how strong the correlation is. So the, you want to know how strong it is? The closer this number is to 1, the stronger the correlation is. This, the sign, tells you what direction the correlation is going or what type of correlation it is. So the number tells you how strong it is. The sign tells you what direction it's going. Right? Don't get confused and think that negative is less strong than positive. Common mistake. Look at the number first. That tells you how strong then look at the sign that tells you which direction it's going. So for instance, um, negative 0.68 is a stronger correlation than positive 0 0.43. 0 0.68, you look here, that's stronger. The negative times tells us which direction. This, if we're looking at a graph, would be going down in this direction, okay? So negative goes down in that direction, positive goes up in that direction. So this would be uh, inverse correlation or a negative correlation and this would be a positive or direct correlation. Sometimes we call this negative. Um, you're probably going to see direct and inverse on the AP exams. So know these terms right here, direct and inverse. They're probably going to be on the AP exam. So inverse would be this. Um, the amount of, as you exercise, if your exercise goes up, then your weight goes down, right? Amount of exercise goes up, exercise is on this axis, weight's on this axis, exercise goes up, weight goes down, okay? Um, this would be, or actually, that's not that's not right. This one would look would be going this direction. Anyway, the arrow is pointing down. The weight would be going down this way. So the you want to look for an arrow that's pointing down for an inverse. Um, so this is wrong. It'd be going that direction. Um, direct would be the smoking example. The amount of smoking goes up then your incidence of lung cancer also goes up. Smoking goes up, incidence of lung cancer goes up. Okay, so correlation, correlation, coefficient. I'll put these on the um, most difficult terms video cast for this unit if you need more practice. A scatter plot is what you get these correlations from. So a scatter plot is just a bunch of little data points and that's how we get our correlation. So this might be one guy's weight and exercise, this might be another guy's, right? And if the thing, you draw a line kind of through the middle, 
the closer to that line that's going through the middle, the stronger the correlation. So this you know, unit might be our negative 0.68. This one's going up this way, and we know we've got them out here. So we know it's kind of going in this direction, but there's a little bit more variation here, so this might be a positive 0.32 on that. So that's what a scatter plot looks like. So you kind of just draw a circle, draw a line through, get the closest to the middle of it, and that'll give you which one. So which one's going to be stronger? This one's the stronger correlation. Uh, correlation causation. We can't, uh, once again, we have a relationship between something we can't say whether or not for sure it's happening or not. So, for instance, you may have an example of um, depression and, um, what does the book use? Depression and self-esteem. So the book says the amount of depression. Does depression lead to low self-esteem? Does low self-esteem lead to depression? Or does something else like a traumatic event lead to both depression and low self-esteem? Like we can't say which does what in a correlation for sure. So correlation, so, so we know there's a relationship between depression and low self-esteem, but we don't know which one causes the other. If you want to see figure 2.4 in your book, that's on page 31 of the Myers text that'll help you out there but um, that's that's an example of why we, we say correlation doesn't co infer causation because we don't know whether depression is the one causing the low self-esteem, low self-esteem is causing depression etc. Okay. Um, one more thing with correlation a correl an illusory correlation is a correlation that doesn't exist. Uh, just got through watching the 49ers versus the Seahawks for the NFC Championship and if you are a Seahawks fan and you wore your lucky jersey today and you now believe that every time you wear that lucky jersey, the Seahawks or your favorite player on the Seahawks is going to score a touchdown, get an interception, play better because of you wearing that thing, that's an illusory correlation. That's a correlation that doesn't exist. You and I both know that it has nothing to do with it, but there's crazy people out there who seem to think that, right? Uh, some of it's just for fun when you see people that do that. Some people really have this, you know, real, there's a correlation. Uh, another example of illusory correlation is um, going outside without a jacket and catching cold, right? Your mom <clears throat> tells you to go outside or put a jacket on before you go outside, you're going to catch cold. Even though the two have no um, relationship, there's no correlation between catching cold and going outside uh, from, the, from a science standpoint. But if your mom, if you happen to catch cold, she's going to remember that time you went outside without catching a jacket on. And she's going to say, see, I told you so, that you didn't wear a jacket, now you've caught cold. So that's an illusory correlation, correlation that doesn't exist. An experiment is something that is done with in research where we have an independent and dependent variable and where we control for all the extra stuff. And we want to look at one or two variables usually. And we want to try to infer causation with these things, with experiments. We try to control for everything else, and we just look at one or two variables. And we call those the independent and dependent variables. Um, we want to look at those things in depth, and we want to control for everything else and see if there's a causation there. Uh, when we do that, we use random sample. We, we do this experiment to see if there is by using a random sample and random assignment. Uh, we had this in the last unit, um, or the last lecture. Once again, real quick, random sample. If I have my group of people, I say I'm going to take every second person. So I'm going to take you, 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 I'm going to take you. This is the population of people I have I have to work with. I'm going to random get a random sample of those people. So I'm going to get every other one in this case. You can get every third one, every fourth one. You can add um, whatever means you want to use of getting people. But now you've got these people in here. Once you've got that random sample, you can then assign those to the two groups. Um, you're going to go on this side, you're going to go on this side, you're going to randomly go here, you're going to go here, you're going to go here. We just randomly assign them to the different sides. Um, this one might be getting the, um, the variable and this one might be what's called a control group and doesn't get anything. We just watch them and so we randomly assign them. You can't assign something to somebody unless you have a sample first. So keep that in mind. Um, 
double blind procedure. This happens in experiments where we don't want either the researcher or the participant to know what's going on or to know whether or not they're receiving a drug. It's usually in drug trials. Um, we don't want the participant to know to be anticipating that they're going to get better, they're going to have an increased performance or what have you. We don't want an overzealous researcher who really wants something to work to know what's going on and to maybe give you a, um, you know, to kind of influence you by what they say, how they act. And so neither person knows. Only some researcher in a booth somewhere knows what's going on and they keep track of what they actually got. But they want it to be as legitimate as possible. Um, so neither person in a double blind, just like it sounds, both both the researcher or the person ex conducting the actual research part of it and the participant don't know what's going on. Placebo effect is, uh, again, a lot of times we see this in drug um, trials. Placebo effect is when a participant receives an actual benefit, an actual effect from a drug, usually a drug, uh, based purely because they think it's going to work or because the researcher told them it's going to work or the doctor told them it's going to work or somebody told them it's going to work so they believe it's going to work. This is actually a very, very um, powerful effect, right? Your brain thinks it's going to work so it works. And they usually use sugar pills or the regular drug and both of them look exactly the same. You know, they both got a T on it. They both look exactly the same. They both taste exactly the same. You're never going to tell the difference between the two. But um, because you think you got it, the real thing, the real deal, you're going to get better. And then finally, a control group is a group uh, that doesn't receive any, um, any of the variable, doesn't receive any procedure done to them. You just watch them and you just see, well... Um, so, for instance, you want to test whether or not something makes sixth graders better at baseball. You're going to have certain kids who don't receive any sort of either whatever you're trying to test, whether it's a new baseball bat, whether it's uh, this drinking chocolate milk before every game, whatever it is, whether it makes it better. You watch certain kids that just do normally what they always do. And if they get better too, just because, and as, as while the other group gets better, then you go, well, maybe it's not the thing that's making them better, the chocolate milk that's making them better. Maybe it's just because they're getting older. They're getting stronger, they're getting more mature, maybe that's what's causing it. So we have a control group to show that it's not just a fluke and we're not attributing something to uh, a variable that doesn't exist. I'm going to do these three, the independent confounding and dependent variables, on a separate uh, video cast. I'll post that next because these three are very uh, confusing for a lot of people and I think I'm going to give you a little bit more chance to practice with it and make this video a little bit shorter. So look for these ones in a, a separate video, independent, confounding, and dependent variables. They're very, very important, extremely important for the FRQs on the AP exam, extremely important to understand just for AP psychology and uh, general psychology in general. And um, so we'll spend a, a whole video just talking about that. So that's it for today, and uh, we'll see you all later.